Welcome to our Rollmaster actual play session. Twilight of the Old Order is a campaign set in the world of Duranaki, the continent of men. In this gritty, cutthroat world, politics, religion, and commerce are all intertwined and reign supreme. Characters need to be both smart and ruthless to survive. We hope you enjoy our story and, as always, may the dice roll in your favour. This is episode 104 of Twilight of the Old Order. The Twilight Party have arrived in the free city of Jebai Ritana and are planning their next move and gathering information. We begin our tale just as our heroes have clinched a tempting bid for their precious haul. A treasure pivotal for funding their daring expedition to the forsaken dead city of Tarek Nev or acquiring lethal arms and artifacts to vanquish their foes. Hello, I'm Chris, otherwise known as GM Chance, and welcome to our story. And that story is Twilight of the Old Order. These are the six characters in play today, the characters that will delight, entrance, and amaze you with their exploits. And in a second or two, I'm going to hand over to each one of those characters. And uh, Pete, I'm going to start off with you, I meant to say earlier on, um, to introduce their character, a little, a, li a very short amount of it uh, about them, and then um, they'll answer a, a character development question, which I've sent out previously. Before I do, two very quick comments. Just a massive thanks to our subscribers and for our supporters. Um, really appreciate the kind comments and um, yeah, just the, the general support and encouragement that we're getting. What I'd say to somebody that comes across this video for the first time, if you find yourself enjoying it, you find yourself laughing, learning from it, basically just getting something out of this video, really encourage you to click the, ideally, the subscribe button down below, but if not, uh, just a, a like would be brilliant. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, the other thing to, to make mention is this is episode 104. Wow, it's been this game's been going for a long time. However, we've only recently, in the last say 20 or so episodes, started recording this game. If you're wanting to learn a bit about what's happened previously, there are a couple of links below. One's a short video. The other link is a, a link to a PDF which tells a bit more of a story um, about about the game in a little bit longer format. There we go, that's that's it for my intros. Pete, over to you please, if you'd introduce your character, answer a question, then don't forget to, to hand over to somebody else, please. Go for it. Sure thing, thank you. Yeah, kia ora, I'm, I'm Pete. Um, I'm going to be playing Nicholas today. <laughs> Nicholas is a common man. Um, he is a, a mentat by profession, so um, <laughs> he's a spell user of the mentalism realm. So he does... Spells to do with minds and people's, people's minds and perceptions. Um, he's quite an unassuming and quiet sort of fellow. No, not a nice guy, but um, sort of quite, usually quite passive. Um, the character development question I'll be answering is, which party member do you believe has the most to hide? And I suppose, um, and actually in this case, Nicholas knows he's got a lot to hide. Um, his... Um, <laughs> particular perspective on the world means that uh, his research into people's minds and things means that you know he believes that and he learnt this from his father that you know sort of the the, the ends the ends justify the means so he watched his father run himself into the ground and basically kill himself due to his dedication to his work and Nicholas has extrapolated that extrapolated that to mean that into his research into the effects of trauma on people's minds he basically the ends justify the means and if that means that he's he does nasty stuff to people well that's that he's legitimate le, le, you know he's allowed to do that in his brain anyway okay perhaps his brain's a bit perhaps his brain's a bit twisted um so um he knows that that's not a lot of the things he 
uh, I wouldn't say likes to do, well he might like it, but that he, uh, his research anyway, um, he knows a lot of his research is not uh, palatable by most of society, so he knows he must, he must, people don't understand, so he knows he has, he has to work to keep that quiet. Um, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> the sheep people are ignorant. They don't know what's going on. So. I, don't, I don't understand the academic <laughs> research. Exactly, exactly. I don't, I don't get how important exactly. it is. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'd like to hand over to uh, Anthony, please. Excellent. All right. Kia ora, everyone. Um, I'm playing Escalion, or Escal for short. Um, he's a tall half elf warrior mage um, who at times couldn't hit the side of the barn door. Um, but that is what it is. Uh, he also comes from the uh, port city of Shabibi, um, and according to his favourite weapon is his uh, newly acquired ornate cutlets. Um, have, hang out in uh, Jibai Ratana at the moment is uh, a little bit challenging because he's not a strong believer of the faith, but uh, uh, he's bluffing it at the moment. Um, and while somewhat reserved about his passing connections, he's definitely paid dividends for the party recovering their ingots last session. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, uh, who, who is the party member that he uh, aligns with the most uh, morally? Um, it would be Severin, um, probably from their background working together as Sword for Hire and probably the jobs they, they did. Excellent. Uh, and the next character I am playing again while Aiden's away is uh, Grey, uh, a silent, rugged muscular and handsome half-elf beastmaster who's uh, very in tune with the wild um he's very fond of his large axe um but uh, as it was uh happened in the last session um he's not too bad flexing his pecs as well um he is enjoying jebo ratana as uh, it's a very uh hustling bustling um which reminds him a bit of his uh carnival circus days nice. um yeah um and what was the moral line that uh, Gray wouldn't cross? Uh, it would be killing animals for sport. Mm. Um, yeah, no, it um, needs to be a purpose for the uh, uh, any sort of animal being um, killed. Um, yeah, whether it's for uh, humane reasons or it's um, attacking, etc. But uh, yeah, not for sport, and you probably frown on. Um, People just doing it out of spite. Cool. If, yeah. if not, uh, confront them aggressively. Yep. Yep. Do you, reckon, great. do you reckon he'd get violence over someone being cruel to an animal? Uh, yeah, I think so. And I think that comes back a bit to his circus background as well. Um, you know, um, seeing how they were treated at times. But um, yeah, if you, if you were if you saw someone being overly vicious or nasty or you know like a, a dog in the street or something that um is, it doesn't need to be kicked or whatever he'd probably go or he'd leave it at but if, if some was the cruelly mistreating animals then um yeah he'd definitely uh probably distracted and go on a little quest to release them Excellent. and uh, receive them or or put them out of their misery yeah okay, cool thank you Maybe we should. Uh, I think Graham's back with us, but maybe we should jump to Stara uh, next, just in case he's not. Stara. Okay. Can you hear me? My character is Jada. Mm -hmm. She was given to a monastery when she was one year old. And they. Um, so she doesn't know her parents. It was all a big secret. And she was raised by a group of uh, nuns. Monks. Do, Monks are none. Do, do you know some nuns have dirty habits? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll get my coat. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. That's one of my favourite jokes. Sorry. Oh, Sorry. Oh, Should we roll for that wounding? <laughs> <laughs> so, so she's raised by monks and nuns, but they were um, they believed in in mil military. Um, what do you call it? Martial arts. So that, that you should always train and that healing the sick was a way of like balancing the evil in the world. So they're quite unusual there. So a lot of like training <clears throat> with quarter staff for her. And uh, she's very tall, so Arab looking, wears a um, face covering. And yeah, very good with a quarter staff. Um, she loves healing people. Excellent. 
Um, she, the question she's going to answer is, which party member do you believe has the most to hide? She actually is a bit scared about her own past. She doesn't know who her parents were. She knows no one will tell her. She's not sure if that's for, because they were bad people, good people, if she should be worried. So she's always got that hanging over her. Probably why she's so quiet all the time. Interesting. <laughs> Great answer. Thank you very much. And we I have... think I'll pass it to Graham. Excellent. Thank you. Is he, is he there? He is. I'm here. Aha. <clears throat> Sorry for that. Um, so I'm playing two characters in this game, the first of whom is Severin. He is a swordsman uh, by profession, and Sorry. he has Changing the dedicated... There we go. He's not quite as tall as that person. <laughs> um, but he looks even shorter there, I don't know what you've done to him. Um, Proportions he of is an a... <laughs> He is a Northman, uh, uh, sort of blonde haired blue-eyed fellow um quite convivial quite a charming chap um level-headed and uh you know quite a quite a charmer uh, and a dab hand with a broadsword um which he's dedicated his life to um in terms of a question um moral line he'd never cross he wouldn't kill uh, innocents non-combatants innocents he's a decent fellow he doesn't he's not a complete psychopath he knows how to use a sword and you know he could he's seriously damaged a lot of people with that sword but um as far as he's concerned they all had it coming that nobody was taken out arbitrarily they were legitimate combatants so that's that's his kind of moral line on that so just a, sorry just a question on that how how so he wouldn't he himself would not slay a, an innocent how would just hypothetically, how how would he feel about being in a situation where someone else might, and Severin ha potentially could intervene? Uh, I think we've we've had some difficult moments, haven't we? Um, in the early days of our party, um, possibly before anyone else here other than yourself was around uh we had some really testing times where we had some a very misaligned group uh, in the party and we don't have that so much now um and yeah i i well if you you can you know i think he severin had one of those characters by the throat at one point i mean it has all kicked off hasn't it in the past um uh yeah what's but, that uh, what's that it was an npc that was doing it just out of interest would he always uh, he, step in, do you think? No, oh, look, he's he's not a paladin, you know? Okay, okay. He's, he's right. not stupid, and he... Look, if, if the consequences of stepping in were to put himself or the party in deep shtuk, mm -hmm. he'd be clever about it. Okay. Um, yep. But if, if, if the... You know, if, if, you know, he would step in if... Otherwise, for sure. Cool, okay. Just out of interest. Mm. Thank you. Yep. Sorry, I cut you off, T uh, Tenya. The yep. character. Uh, other, other character, Tenya Anastasia. She is a elf. Um, a, by profession, she is a hunter. And she is uh, actually from, despite that profession, from very good parentage and a very wealthy background. Uh, however, her family fell upon hard times and were disgraced. They lost their wealth and she took to adventuring and her long-term aim is to sort of right the wrongs that occurred there and see them back um you know return to their rightly place in this in the society of Jeb jebi rima um however she's become somewhat distracted uh, of late and in fact her father has has died and she's still rather distraught by that um connected with that moral line she'd never cross she's look she's a not an easy person to get around with or get on get along with but she is loyal and um the moral line she'd never cross is that she doesn't sell out her friends and family so although she's difficult although she's a bit sarcastic she would walk across hot you know hot coals to to avenge or help those that she cares about and has aligned herself with even if she's a little bit uptight about expressing that and oh. i think probably when that's happened across all the party before but it's quite evident that she's a very loyal person cool thank you very much uh just a minor 
minor, minor, minor um, uh, correction. Uh, she's from Jebi Mabeth rather than Jebi Rima. Oh, did I slip? Sorry. Yeah, yes. it's all right. Some uh, of the time. Yeah. Just, uh, just <coughs> for our listeners. That, that, for our listeners and our viewers that might have particularly keen ears. Very good. One and all. Well met, as, as always. Um, thank you very much indeed. Uh, that's... Nope. That there is the party, gentle, gentle viewer. Um, that there are our heroes for this game. Can I please call on super quickly uh, for a very quick summation of what happened last time which uh, the episode was called Punch Drunk um, Yeah I can do that um, Yeah if you're happy Nick, uh, Pete? Yeah you go, go ahead Yep, thank you Hi, um, So it was uh, end of last well, this last session we started off as just wrapping up the scrap with the um, drunkards um, there's a few good manoeuvres there by all the party and uh, before the drunks took the hint and uh, we, you know, licked their wounds and went off on their way. Then we um, returned back to our lodgings, I think, and we met up with Alam. Um, and then he took us to meet uh, one of his friends, Ali Baba. I'm going to say that was his name. Uh, a severe case of halitosis, I believe, was mentioned. <laughs> um... And then some suggestions on where to go to meet somebody else. Um, then our, uh, Fahad, he arrived in in a very um, uh, welcoming uh, way and took us to uh, recover our ingots. Um, and um, he was uh, very uh, taken aback from... Uh, Eskel's um, connections with his uh, mistress, um, yeah, uh, almost uh, bowing at his feet, uh, more or less, um, sort of thing. And then we went to one of the um, metal uh, metallurgy type places to start doing some uh, negotiating around some of our ingots. And uh, one of our ingots, which we believe with mithril been told it is not mithril so the clicks there and i think that's about where we got to is we were going to go and bounce around a few more uh uh places to get some valuations done perfect the mithril was just a myth <laughs> the name within the name the whole time <laughs> you thought my bad my bad dad joke was bad um nice uh a couple of comments from me in a second but in, anybody else th thank you that was extremely well um summarized and it was been it's been two weeks i think since we played uh anybody else want to add anything else in there nope the, the advantage of uh listening to the recording yeah. uh, in my morning walks just there this week you, there you go there you go um Excellent, thank you. So yes, uh, per perfectly narrated, perfectly described. So today is um, uh, the twenty-first of of moons. Um, you are in this uh, this city here in in Jebai, uh, Jebai Ritana, uh, and and that's actually probably a reasonable description of the weather too. It's a bit overcast today. It's a bit drizzly. Um, it's about halfway through the the day. Uh, the the meeting with Farhad took place in, in the morning. Um, you have gone to uh, the bank uh, to collect your ingots back. You've you've been given a token in your bank to be able to come and go as you wish. So um, and you're paying a small amount. Uh, GM, by the way, has yet to record how much that is, but you have a um, uh, a, a, a payment at the bank where the majority of your ingots are, are kept. You took one of each ingot and you've gone out uh, to, to go around several metal traders. You also, a couple of days ago, uh, several days ago, back on the, uh, the 18th, you put um, orders in for uh, very beautiful clothing and um you're able to collect those uh later later today you each paid six gold uh two silver from the golden thread to to be very um it to be very beautifully beautifully attired uh other than that i think that's 
well, no, a couple of other things, sorry. Over those three days, so from the 18th to the 21st, a number of characters have uh, headed out around town um, where a character doesn't speak the local language. A number of people, so the only people who speak Haradanian, which is the most prominently spoken language in the city, are both uh, Askel and Jadar. If someone doesn't speak one of those languages, Askel or Jadar have, has, has gone with the other per, uh, character, and various characters have gone around and have gone to several other uh, either archives or libraries, and you've been able to get into those buildings relatively easily and for a relatively small amount of money. Uh, you've also encountered, uh, come across uh, several booksellers. Um, so the printing press in this world was invented some two, three hundred years ago, and you know, printed books—they're not massively common. Nothing like they are in in our world, but you know, they they are relatively common. People do use. Seeing a printed book is not out of the realm of the possibility. As a result of the printed book, people have made money from selling spell lists. Uh, that you can study and learn from. Um, typically, prosaic lists, they're relatively common to be found, but others can can be found. Uh, for some on the black market, you guys haven't needed to go to the black market in this case. Um, some on the black market, but uh, um, yeah, more powerful spells, you generally have to go to a guild or a society or somebody that is steeped in that learning. Which brings me on to Askel. Askel, you were after some warrior mage lists. I'm going to do a little bit of hand waving here and say over those couple of days, a few days, you were able to approach a guild here. Um, this is not, the magic that warrior mages use is definitely powerful, but it's not to the degree necessarily of the likes of a, uh, a magician or, or a, a pure scout spell user. So people are maybe a little bit more relaxed on supplying information um, to learn from in addition to that uh, you are you are from this culture so you speak Haradanian even though you're not from the city per se but you are viewed you're not viewed with a lot of suspicion you you speak a little bit strangely because your accent is from you know clearly from the motherland in other words from the Empire of Thumazul but I've kind of allowed, in, in just to kind of game it a bit, but but to explain it, and I think reasonably justifiably, that because of your background, because you speak the language fluently, you have uh, discovered a um, a guild, probably just would be a uh, you know a working guild of warrior mages here, rent themselves out um, or for services rendered, uh, nowhere near as large as the Golden Ball. The Golden Ball, by the way and some of the characters in this game know the Golden Ball quite well. The Golden Ball is a global mercenary organization. Um, so the, the mercenary guild, sorry, the, the Warrior Mages Guild that Askel you've found is just a local one. It's just a relatively small operation. But you've managed to charm them but Askel. You've managed to get in their good books. You, you're kind of one of the lads, one of the, one of the locals. You speak the language and you've been able to get access to some of those um, more hidden hidden mysteries. Jada, for you too as well, you've been able to access some lay healer lists. Again, healing people was considered generally a pretty good thing to do. So access to those lists, at least in this city, is more common. So some of the lists that you're trying to, to, to find has been, uh, you know, ha have been made more available to you. Some of the other lists that some of the others of you have found, if you have got access to them, um, it's just been down to luck. There's, there's a certain percentage that actu actually you are able to discover those lists in book form or in the library form, and um, you've been able to gain access uh, to those to those books. The last thing to note is very hastily, just before we started playing, I put a list of, of various items that are, are that you've discovered over those last three days uh, up for purchase in Jibai Ritana, and you have those to, to consider as well. So I'm happy to, if, if required, backtrack uh, in time a little bit over the last three days and see if you would have made any purchases or um, made any or undertaken any study, etc. Um, before we bring it up to uh, the the day of the the 21st, where we actually start start play. I'll actually will start the game by saying we're starting on the 21st, but I will go around each character and ask them what they've been doing for the last three days. That was a lot from me. I'm sorry. Uh, 
any before I before I start the game, any qualifying questions, anything with what I just said that doesn't make sense. I, I have a, just a quick question. Mm. Some of the bell lists that Nicholas found yep. are level six to ten. Yes. Uh, he can't learn those unless he's learned one to five of the same list. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Correct. And uh, just a question for me. Mm. Um, uh, so, so the library lists were yes. they all free? Um, uh, no, you would pay uh, for a simple simple way of measuring. You'd pay uh, half the cost of yeah. Let, no, yeah. Let, let, let's say one third the cost of access to a list for sale. Oh, yeah. yeah, just because you mentioned some of them, uh, library, you didn't mention cost, and then you talk bookstore, there was Correct. a cost, Correct. and then at one, one of them on the list, so you mentioned library, it had a cost, is it, all, is it not all yeah. free? So, so bl blanket rule, at least for this city, um, I'll, I'll come back to it for, uh, in other locations with a slightly more uniform way of doing it, but in this, in this city, if you've discovered a list that uh, you can access at, at a library or if at a place of learning, and obviously a language that you can speak, assume that it's a third the cost of what it would be to to purchase um the advantage obviously of purchasing a book is you can travel with it you can do whatever you like as opposed to a library or some kind of uh, scholarly place where you're bound to uh to use use that book in that particular location so so the bookstore as uh, so a library is you have to go and read it and it's can't check it out uh, as yeah. such um, yes. but the bookstore you're actually buying the list yeah. and taking it with you yeah it's, okay. it's your possession it's you you own okay. that you own that item um cool. and just to to round off we we uh put uh we finally confirmed the length of time for learning lists just confirm that house rule so the the uh, it's it's in there already but just to reiterate again one week um for seven days of study for eight hours a day for an open list from uh, levels one to ten two weeks of 14 days eight hours study for a list of open list from 11 to 20 etc and, and that uh those those house rules for lengths of time are in the uh are in the whatsapp and i'll put i'll put them into the um the rule section uh in the discord any other qualifying questions folks before we kick off oh okay great if we're ready let's start the game so yes indeed it is um the 21st of moons you've just got a price from your first ingots i'm assuming the party's together you've probably been walking around you're probably quite curious to see how much money you can get it's been tanya who's been doing the, the trading I've, I've been a bit generous tanya with some of your roles because you've had to do it through translation in future i probably won't do that again you'd really need to speak the language to do the trading but for, for the sake of moving things on a little bit with a bit of assistance from both askel and jadar you've been able to haggle that price and that's taken a, a few hours to come to, to to that price so that's where we're actually going to start kind of the clock ticking on the game but I am going to go around each character now and and ask them what what have they been doing over the last three days. I'm going to kick off with Nicholas, please. Oh, um, yes, Nicholas would be, um, you know, with the assistance of Jada and and or Askel, as you say, would be going and doing the shopping. Um, he would certainly be buying some of the things, the books that uh, were in the language. He can't actually speak Haradanian yet. He intends Correct. to. Yep. learn so he would actually over the next three days and into the future can we uh, he would be asking jada and um askel if he can start learning to read haradanian from them and perhaps if they're willing to spend a bit of time with him so that's you know when he do go does go up a level next that's where his training for haradanian has come from um he would be wanting to buy mm. buy books basically he's already got one list he's re he's recorded from the library did you want to know those exact those books now because i don't have his money because it's on the xp sheet yes I can't get no, no. let's do that let's do that offline but cool. um yep. ha happy for you to do that 
Yeah. So he would be buying books and learning Her Herodanian. Okay. Pop, pop uh, any purchases he made um, into into the XP sheet, please. Once awesome. it's once we'll it's finalized. Cool. Yep. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Lovely. Uh, let's go to Askel. Over the last. Yeah. Few yeah. Obviously, um, would be um, hanging out with Nicholas and obviously Jada, and I'd say Gray would have been covering uh, whether we're all going to the party. Uh, looking for the spell lists, uh, various stores, and equally. Um, um, although, when did we get the ingots? Today. But during today. Today. Okay. So Eskil wouldn't have didn't have any money because he or not not much money because he spent it to buy his cutlass. So he would have either had to borrow money off uh, party members mm -hmm. to buy any spell lists from the bookstores. Otherwise, he would be. He would have just had to note it and then had to go back uh, once we cash in some of the ingots. Okay. Um, yeah, and Gray would be uh, the same, just uh, tagging along. Um, and obviously, when we um, get through a bit of a list for him, um, yeah, oh, he'd be doing the same. But uh, Gray probably had money, um, so he probably would have been able to buy some. Okay. Uh, and in slower time, we'll figure out what those lists are for Gray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. I'll, I'll wrap that up in the next couple of days. Nice one. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, Jada? Um, I would have been looking at these spells, understanding about all these new spells, and figuring out which one to buy. Okay, cool. Which ones are possible? Mm. Okay. Fantastic. Quite excited about prosthetics. Isn't one of us <laughs> missing a hand? <laughs> Uh, the other party is, uh, um, <laughs> yes, so, uh, in the, in the other game, the, uh, Ain't No Place for a Hero game, uh, Graham's character, Etienne, uh, is indeed, Etienne. Okay. It, it is Etienne who is, who is, uh, I was going to say a bit armless, but it's just a hand. Yeah, he is missing <laughs> it, he is missing a hand. Cool. Okay. Oh, I'd also be you going to meet up with that. Yeah. yeah. Are you, oh, are you yeah, going to meet up with that party? Yeah, when we, when we meet, nice. I can give him his hand. Yes. Are, Good are idea. You, are you clocking up the bad dad jokes, are you, Pete? <laughs> well, I'm just thinking <laughs> uh, we, might, we, we might meet somehow in the future. Maybe you might. Maybe yeah. you <laughs> might. Imagine that. Imagine that. What, what clairvoyance you have there, Nicholas. <laughs> um, marvellous. Thank you. Uh, nothing else from you, Jada. I'll look, I'll be asking around about those singing, singing sisters, which I'm really keen to meet. Well, yeah, well, probably in your travels, you, you would have <laughs> definitely identified, um, you know, they're, they're, they're very prominent, if you imagine almost like the Red Cross or the Red Crescent. Certainly there's, right. no, there's no harm, there's no, sorry, there's no harm. There's no issue in you finding them. Their, 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 right. tem their temple is very prominent. Great, thanks. Yeah. Okay. I think the other thing um, we were talking to the side was uh, around the... From the in between, Jada picked up some PowerPoint multipliers, and we couldn't recall if she did or didn't. I know Askel got the earrings. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it was Kiros. Was it? I think. Does anyone it... recall? I'm sure we said um, we need the healer to be able to have a bit more. Or maybe we well, didn't. I don't think you did because. Well, I, actually, I, look, I. I can't remember um is the honest truth uh don't forget jada did have powerpoint multipliers in the form of the um the, the cloak class Roach. yes uh you did find in your last shopping expedition there were some prices for um multipliers that would work for jada and uh, that's I don't, right i, I think that's what we're doing here yeah. yeah i don't have those to hand but but uh, too expensive uh, mm. But those prices are in there um, in, in the in the in the Discord. Very good. Thank you, thank you, Jada. Uh, Severin and Tanya, please. Last three days. Um, so Severin's been doing a few things. Um, certainly, a, a, a plus ten composite bow bow has caught his eye, and I think he would like to purchase that. Yeah, sure. So uh, I can make those adjustments. Magic or no, no magic? <clears throat> I believe it is um, magic. Okay, so so as mentioned, as mentioned, the stuff I sent through, that would definitely require a trading roll from uh, right. <clears throat> from. Oops, a Daisy. Um, yes, yeah, so all of all of these would require a, a trading roll because they're, they're relatively 
expensive items. So let me just find. I suppose anybody has the price of a composite bow to two hands, do they? Uh, yes. Enchanted times forty. Okay. Well, where? F f seventeen. Oh, seventeen SP. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, all right. So, um, it's, uh, Tanya, do you want to do your stuff with a roll? This will be masked in terms of speaking to a bowyer to see if you can get one of these um, these items. <clears throat> Seventy-one. Seventy-one. Sure. Eh, 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 eh. Just coming, just coming, just coming. Uh, coming, coming, coming. Oh, one thing for our regular viewers. Um, the GM has been uh, somewhat uh, slack with doing our deep dives. So each um, reason we regularly, semi-regularly actually, of late, we do a deep dive into a rule that Rollmaster um, has. Uh, I haven't done one for a while. <laughs> We're not doing one in this game due to lack of time, but we will do some in the future. 71 was your roll. Thank you. And what do we decide was her uh, bonus, please, Graham, for Plus. 11, I think it was. Yeah, uh, so her live perception is 44. So divided by 4. Oh. Oh, sorry. Let's try that again. So it was this. <coughs> oh. All right. See. Oh. Alright. Just coming. Um, so after a period of time with with some assistance with the the usual endless cups of tea and discussing about whose aunts roommates dogs sisters mothers brother-in-laws whatever um is sick and you know how the merchant concerned is um you know is being robbed brined the the the, the final price that comes back is um 748 silver or 74 gold eight uh silver sorry can you say that again sure so so 748 silver or rather yep. if you prefer um 74 uh what am i doing yeah 70, 74. 74 gold eight silver yeah i think you'll take that okay cool uh yeah and the other thing uh he was interested in um now Severin has an interest in, I mean, he is a, you know, born a blacksmith, uh, and uh, he's interested in metal anyway. Uh, so if he could borrow someone who could speak, well, I guess, you know, he's got a, he can use the earbuds um, in, once for an hour in those three days. I'm sure he would make the most of that. Um, he's very interested in this ingot that we have that is not mithril. Mm-hmm. And I know we're we're looking at getting valuations across town anyway, so he certainly would have gone along, and he would have uh, listened carefully to all the met metallurgists and what they had to say, and he'd also have a good look at the metal himself, and he has a smithying of plus 43. Right. I don't know if that counts for anything. Um, and, and he's just interested in not only what it is, but its qualities. So um, he would also uh, ask uh, the, pe the people, you know, to give their comment on its how strong it is and mm -hmm. um, he'd also urge uh nicholas and or jada uh, if they haven't already to actually attune it to just trying any means of understanding about what this substance actually is would be useful 
Okay. Nicholas is happy too. Okay. Um, just have a look. It's a smithying. Bizarrely enough, there isn't a so so in um, kind of the Bible of composites. No, no, hang on. no, I'm reading the wrong one. Metal law. All evaluations made of other metals. Smithing. Don't have smithing. It's weird. Ah, here we go. <clears throat> Don't have smithing. That's weird. Is it just under crafting, perhaps? As a scale. Yeah. Uh, I think it's in the extended. No, 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 uh, no, 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 no. Sorry, sorry, so sorry, sorry. Not being clear. This book here, which is um, so number two, it has a list of similar skills and how to handle similar skills. Oh, maybe I'm. Hang on a sec. Gymnastics evaluations appraisal. Yeah, look, I, I can't see it there, but let, let's go with let's go with something logical. Um, let's let's go. So there is definitely a skill you can get called. There's a skill called weapon law and weapon evalu um weapon, sorry, metal law and metal evaluation. I'd roll both those into together to say that's the same skill, but it is a dis that is definitely a distinct skill. Severin would have some knowledge of that, so I'd give you uh, half half for your smithing. I think is fair. Um, so, the, uh, probably the one issue is, Severin, um, y y you can use the earbuds, of course. Just give me three rolls over the last three days. I'm just interested in no failures. So give me three rolls, because I don't want, I'm just curious to see if Severin fries his brain using them. One, two, three. And also collect the experience points for those spells. No, he's safe. Safe, cool. Um, so, however, so he does get the one hour from the earbuds, but uh, they. Uh, so, so the earbuds are, and I think you might have asked a question on this, the earbuds are once per day or one hour a day. Um, that's one hour. So sometimes these discussions and the, you know, um, these evaluations and these descriptions of the metals go on for several hours. Uh, I guess we're very used to in, in the modern world of walking into a store and saying, I want this, this and this, and can you tell me about this? And the conversation's kind of done in, you know, 15 minutes, less sometimes. For those, for people who have traveled, or for, for those of you who have traveled in, in particularly developing countries, often things are done at a bit of a slower pace, and the same <clears> would be here. So the conversations, like the trading, would be carried out over a length of time. So Severin, you get some of the understanding, and you can definitely ask questions uh, over that time, uh, and I'll answer roughly what he gets, but you wouldn't have got all the nuances and all of the discussions um, coming back from, from the... Um, the the questions about this strange and got could you give me a um again a masked roll on uh try seven just trying to understand a bit more about the the ingot himself please 18 18 cool Master it could be very good it could be very bad uh could you roll again please 64 cool and Okay. 
And what's his, uh, what is Severin's skill, please? With a quarter of, um, a quarter of his smithing. What is it? No, a half, a, a half, half, a half of his smithing, yep. So that a half would be 21.5. 21. 21. 0.5. Do you go up or down? Uh, for you, Graham, I go up. Oh, thanks. Uh, for everybody, I go up. But for you, Graham, no. particularly, I go up. No, you didn't. That's... <laughs> um, okay, so 22. Okay. Um, look, he's he's stumped. You know, he, and he has been looking at this this ingot ever since you guys found them in uh, in the in between <clears throat> the strange place that you located them. But he's he's no you know with even a bit of time, a few days in between, he he really doesn't know what it is. Again, going around the uh, uh, there are six metal traders that you've been able to find. Oh, you know, decent quality metal traders you've been able to find in the city. People are uh, yeah, people are just puzzled. Um, basically, they they really don't. They really don't know what it is. I've got no idea. Oh, sorry, you've only been to one. Don't forget, you've only been to one because you haven't had the ingot until today. So actually, you can't. You wouldn't have gone around a lot, but you can do that in the future. If you remember, oh yeah, we, I think we rolled them for. Um, we we rolled we yeah. in advance. Yes, we yeah. have. Yes, sorry, I'm just remembering. In advance, we've run. We've rolled the results of the prices that Tanya get back for the ingots but yes we only got the ingot for today so um you've quizzed one one uh metal trader and again for today and no further no further insight and um but did I learn anything about not not what it is but it's in terms of how like hard it is or anything like that <clears throat> um you know, can it be worked even you know um uh the the person concerns um, isn't isn't sure. He he says he thinks it's reasonably hard. Um, certainly harder than gold, without a doubt. Um, but you know he'd have to melt it and test it and prod it, and that would take time and money to experiment on. And he's just not particularly interested in it. He can't right. see any any particular value for him here right now. No thanks. Um, when we get someone who, if we have more success with one of the others, perhaps we could have a longer conversation then. Sure. Yep. Uh, unless uh, Nicholas is able to learn anything, but. Yep. Happy for Nicholas to do a attunement on it if that's possible. Yeah. Sure. Here we roll. Oh, eight. 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 Uh, this is, of course, mast. No. It's coming. An eight, you say. Mm-hmm. Where's my eight? When I need it. There's my eight. Okay. Uh, what's his achievement, please? Plus 54. Okay. Um, you don't... Yeah, uh, yeah, Nicholas, it's, it's not, it's not magical, you don't think, like, mm -hmm. it certainly doesn't have any properties, but it, it feels odd. Ooh, okay, yeah. he'll, of course, relate that, um, and also, can I just ask if he's got get, gets any vision from it? Um, this, this yeah, is his, his... yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I'd ask, uh, well, how long does it go back, Pete? What's the description? Um, of the, spell? the vision, oh, vision. That's, so it's not a spell; it's a background option. Yeah. PC receives spontaneous glimpses of events associated with the place, person, item, etc. that he touches. Yep. 
Okay. And, and I, you know, if I may, I mean, yeah, it's just it's entirely your call. Yep. Sure. So, uh, give me give me a master roll, please. Just a general yep. master roll. Oopsies. Twenty-nine. Sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, you you see, um, you just catch glimpses, Nicholas, of of beautiful wings, but painfully beautiful wings, people, hammers, forges, um red hot metal uh the sound of hammers something to do with forgery uh forging definitely that's about it but definitely and sorry, definitely sorry, beautiful yeah. winged people cool right the, yeah the, the people from the vault of the right to swing as his guess but so and an odd feeling there's something odd about it yes but not magical no yeah, you can communicate that to Severin. Okay. Mm. Well, Severin's interested into maybe investigating what we can make it into. Okay. Okay. So Severin, uh, that was your actions for the last three days. Um, as we just, as I just realised during that discussion, you haven't had the ingots until today, so you haven't had those conversations regarding the ingots, um, other than this one. Uh, anything else from Severin and or T uh, Tanya for the last three days? Um, <clears throat> no, I think uh, for Tanya, um, she was interested in, in arrows. Um, she doesn't, doesn't look like they found any magical arrows. Um, they have found weapons of choice, though, with white alloy and high steel. Yes. To confer our arrows among those? Yes. Uh, there's a percentage chance for, for each. Um, so... So definitely non magic. Uh, uh, give me a roll for coming across twenty arrows of plus five. Give me a roll. Uh, Thirty-one. Thirty-one. Yeah, definitely, definitely. She's definitely found um, somebody in town who's got high, higher quality, low steel, plus five uh, arrows. Definitely. Uh, yeah. Give me a roll for uh, plus 10. 48. Success on the plus 10. Okay. And 15. Again, give me a roll. 72. No. Okay. And how much would those plus 10, 20 arrows be? Sure thing. So again, that would have to be um, a trading roll. Mm-hmm. So, top of my head, can you see uh, the pr Can someone help me out and just find the price of arrows? 20 arrows, quickly, please. Yep, looking, looking, looking. Um... Why aren't they under A for arrows? <laughs> <laughs> are they in the other part of the. Other, other part of the yeah, room? they are. They are. They're in the accessories part. Uh, oh, oh, you're going to accessorize. Oh, you do. You well, do. You I'll do. I'll get some dashing feathers then. <laughs> Arrow, 5 BP. Oh, sorry. This is city cost? or yeah, city cost. City cost. Yep. 28 CP. Okay. 28 CP and 28 CP. Cool. Two seconds. Cool. Yeah, not massively expensive, I guess, for arrows. You're not using a huge amount of metal. All right. Um, so two uh, two trading rolls for Tanya. She's got plus fifteen. Let me just check the just before we do. However, she's got plus eleven, I should say, on the trading. Roll on this, uh, less than 10 GP. How much is that? That is copper, bronze, silver. Yep, okay. What's that? It's that. Yeah, give me the first of the rolls, please. One. 
the one. Uh, it's masked, don't forget. Yes. Thank Counting good. on it. Thank goodness. Uh, okay, cool. And what's her bonus? We said 11. Yes. Um, yep, cool. Two nine. So, um, for the plus 10 arrows, you're offered the price of uh, 560 copper pieces. Uh, copper. What's that in um, copper? What's that? Five, so five, five silver. Five silver. Oh, it's fine. Yeah, bring it on. Cool. 20 plus 10 arrows. Sure. That's right. right. 500 copper would be 50 bronze, which would be 5 silver. Yep. Correct. And for the plus fives? Um, well, uh, <clears throat> how many arrows can she carry? Uh, true. Uh, uh, true, true. You know, 20. Yep, it is getting... We have discussed and thought about this. Really good point. Um, I mean, she's got a couple more with the special arrows she carries, but I think you're abs that's a really good question. Um, a bundle of arrows is actually a real pain to carry. I think if you had a pack animal, you could carry more, but thank you for bringing that up. I think that's... Gray? Still... Sorry? Gray? That's right. Um... <laughs> Gray's the pack animal, you mean. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'll okay. be so rude. Um, yeah, that's good. Uh, cool. She'll buy those. Thank cool. Um, Done. Done. So, if you want those adjusted um, titles, then for Severin and Tenya's bows, uh, that would make Severin's bow now plus ninety-two with armor, hundred and two without, and Tenya, assuming she's not using. Oh, um, yeah, I'll post them. Sorry. Yeah, 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 good idea. Cool. Yeah. yeah. All right. Any, anything else in the last um, three days for for those characters? Uh, no, just obviously you know fitting of the clothes and all the rest of it. Oh. Uh, she'd obviously be doing all the trading, so she's, she's probably been a bit busy. Yes. Yeah. No. She. Fair point. She would have. Right. So later on today, you, um, you go and recover your clothes. Uh, you you take them back. You you're careful to keep them out of the rain. Uh, and you are now in the possessions or possession each of um, very, very, very beautiful, beautiful uh, clothing. You look, all of you look quite, quite dashing. Uh, that would bring us, yeah, that would bring us to the end. Oh, there we go. There's the call to, to prayer for, for dusk. Um, for the 21st, GM's going to head to the loo, have a quick chat of what you want to do the next morning. Which is the twenty second of moons coming? There guys. Oh, so depending on the weather, I suppose we're off to the. Oh no, we were going to see. We weren't going to try the. Um... What's his name again? Were we? Who's that? To try and go to the house of Chamberlain. Cool. Yeah, the Chamberlain guy. We were going to actually go through, what's his name? Abdullah Farin, the, the halitosis guy. Did he say, I thought he couldn't help us? Abdullah was said that he may have an info about contacting the Solar Council, right? Oh, okay. Cool. All right, let's do it. I, I thought, was that, was that right? Could be. Let's remember. Yes, I mean, we've got to get on and do that. Um... Because we, yeah, we got to, yeah, crack on, really. Hmm. Mm. And when it comes time to leave, what are we going to do with all this money? Because I suppose it'll be huge. To... So we need to. Well, I, I, I mean, probably keep it in the bank. Um... Have we actually cashed those ingots in yet? Yeah, we haven't. We've got an evaluation. But... No, we're waiting for the right valuation. I, I think, obviously, we can convert some of that into coin uh we might that might spur further purchases I, I guess we just need a what we need to figure out really is is how you know make contact with the mon men figure out they may well pick up the cost you know if this if we share a cause and they're stupidly rich um <laughs> uh they may well you know help us out a little bit with the financing of a party to go and actually 
fulfil their aim. It's not beyond the possibilities. I mean, we I think we should go in looking for a sponsor. Um, but nonetheless, we may need to pick up some. We uh, otherwise we may need to uh, arrange our own transport overland, which is also going to have a cost to it because we're going to need people probably to, to undertake that trip. Mm. Uh, because we're going to be walking through a week. We'll probably need guides. We'll probably need horses. It's by horses. Horses, <laughs> and you know, uh, you know, we probably need a bit of a party to do that. Mm. We might even want extra people too. You know, um, so that might all cost money. I don't know. It may not, but um, I guess we should probably figure that out before we go too crazy on the spending the ingot cash, right? All right. <clears throat> Anything I should be aware of uh, that evening? Nope. Oh, okay. Next day dawns, and uh, you are delighted to see that the weather is a bit more like this. Uh, still some grey skies, but uh, on the 22nd um, of moons, it's hot and sticky. You know, a low of 39, a high of 45. Um, there's a moderate breeze, but it's clear. Mercifully, it's clear. The grey clouds uh, stay away, and uh, the weather is fine. What do you do? So, it was, sorry, Chris, we were struggling to remember whether we had a contact, I was, uh, a contact we could follow up to approach the Solar Council at even a lower level. We spoke to the man with bad breath, but we, uh, we can't yeah. call him. Right. So you you didn't have a you didn't have a contact um, per se, but uh, you did speak to um, Ali, who is a uh, who was a, a friend of. Just getting a bit of feedback there from someone. It's something that I can hear Stara in the distance. You with us, Stara? Oh. Um, so you, you you spoke with Ali, who was a contact of uh, your your friend uh, Alim, who owns the um, uh, the lodge that you're staying in. A and Ali was able to tell you a bit more information. Uh, what he told you was as as follows. So the the Chamberlain who guards um Jasir's Jasir Al Hafiz, the woman that you've been wanting to contact, the chair of the Solar Council, uh is um is a very very haughty individual he's a half elf apparently he is definitely a man about town he is um uh you know he is considered very very wealthy because he has access to the most powerful one of the most powerful women in in the entirety of uh jebai ritana you got a couple of bits of information one is that he likes to play dice and he um, he likes to head down to a slightly more um, unfavorable parts of town in the South Market District. Not a bad part of town, really, but he will go to the dicing houses there. Everybody apparently knows him there. He wears a disguise, but everybody kind of knows who it is. And the rumor has it that he he doesn't go to a great deal of trouble to put on the disguise. Um, kind of... It, it, it's all a bit of a, an open secret that everybody knows that he goes there. He's always accompanied by uh, bodyguards when he goes. Um, and, and during his time there over the last number of years, uh, you know, long time that he served um, Jasir uh, Al Hafiz, he uh, has developed a reputation. He's not especially good at dice, is one thing. Um, but the other thing is that he is very, very, very susceptible to flattery. So he is known, the information that Ali provides you is that he is known throughout uh, Jebai Ritana as being an extremely smart man, but quite a peacock and absolutely loving the sound of his own voice, um, has a very high opinion of himself and 
for those that are clear enough and slick enough of tongue, if they can flatter him, they can often get their way. Um, the advice that Ali gave you is um, approaching him during the dice, dicing houses, uh, when he goes down to the dice houses, you potentially can, but uh, a few people have tried to access him that way and, and have not met with a lot of success. He, he doesn't drink, so... Um, his one his one vice is gambling, but he always stays completely sober when he goes down to the dicing house uh, dicing houses. Uh, he he has his bodyguards, and he himself is while well, relaxed and enjoying himself. He is on on alert. So the, the general advice was other people have kind of tried to surreptitiously sidle up to him, spill a drink or something, and whoops, sorry, and then try to charm him, and it hasn't really worked. Um, so you could go to the dicing houses if you, if you, if you wish, but that was a suggestion that, that Ali, um, had that probably isn't worth your while. Uh, but yes, the main point was that he is a half-elf, he loves dicing, um, and he definitely loves, uh, beautiful clothes, um, he loves good taste, uh, and has a very high opinion of himself. Okay, um, and did, sorry, did, there was one particular gambling house that we knew, know he obtains? Uh, there, was, there was several, several of the dicing housing in the South Market District. Uh, they mm -hmm. listed three or four. Okay. Uh, Alright. Uh... Well, I guess we chance our arm at that then. What do you think? Well, I mean, it's, yeah, so from advice, we won't... I don't think we should try and approach him there. But at least view him and see if we pick up inf more information. Do we know where he lives? Does he live in the place we are trying to get into before? The What's it called? The Painted, Painted House? Painted House, yes. It might be better to just hang out at the Painted House and just see... Well, we don't know what he looks like, will we? This is the problem. Um, well, look, I, I may look for want of trying something. Um, you know, we may as well get decked out in our poshest clothes, and um, Severin will, with the help of uh, yeah, with his ring, um, so earbuds, uh, try and charm the guards into trying to pass him on to someone who could he could make an appointment with to see him and he can try and concoct some story you know why the hell not if that doesn't come to anything we'll think again yep 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 if you're into charmer give it a go others think and if not then maybe try and locate him one of these Anybody got any ideas about how to intercept this trap? Um, no. I mean, with Gaskell obviously um, speaks the local language, you know, he could go out for a bit of a mingle and mm. mix and mingle type. Not not stealthy, but just, you know, mm. collect any info. Um, like, like go and play dice with him sort of thing not to tr not to approach him but to gather information yeah yeah because obviously yeah. it's going to be easy for, for him to, anybody you know. got a gambling skill <laughs> that's going to go well don't spend too much money then <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's it I mean we're bad think, enough think, all in the dice anyway are we? I think those both sound like good approaches I mean why not gather more information just you know there might be something that is let slip or some tip or something who knows and also a try at the house with severin's cool. charm so gray has gambling, has gambling. Mm. yeah so Sorry. gray's got gambling not very strong plus 10 but it's got, well, got it. well that's yeah. fine and well, if he and askel were to go with askel as, as the interpreter <laughs> but i've probably not being good is not a, not a problem i reckon just just enough to not enough to not be uh, 
absolutely terrible and put all our ingots on the table. <laughs> all on black! Bang! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think someone might have to give uh, Grey a very definite budget. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. So who knows, though? I mean, we don't know what, what the because it's getting to one of these dicing places is. Oh, well, yeah. Oh, it remains to be seen. But let's try the front door first, shall we, and then see how yeah. we go. Yeah, I think it's cool. All right. Okay. Ray also has um, juggling and trickery as a proper circus, <laughs> circus days, too. <laughs> um, fantastic. Uh, you wake up. Um, what? Yeah, tell me what you do. Uh, just as described, um, uh, present ourselves at the gate, uh, uh, Severin, in our bestest clothes, making sure we don't get pissed on. Um, and Severin attempts to charm the guard, says from overseas, uh, dysentery, he'll make up some name that Tenure provides him, saying that, you know, uh, he's made contact, he would like to try and make an appointment. Uh, I appreciate this is not really the, the best way about going about it, but he finds himself a long way from home and without in need of an introduction. Mm -hmm. And um, but I'm sure Chamberlain blah de blah will be pleased, very pleased with to make his make uh, to reacquaint himself with or will make his acquaintance and will reward those and look look smile upon those who have have made those arrangements. All right, cool. So uh, great. So let, let's just jump, chunk that down into stages a little bit. You get dressed up in your finest. Who is going with you, Severin? Some other fine-looking people mm -hmm. who can uh, speak the language when my time comes out, runs out. Mm -hmm. And someone like Tanya who can help with a few of the customs. Okay, so Tanya's coming coming with you, dressed in her finest. Great. Oh, yes. Uh, others? Oh, well, yeah, well, I mean, you can either take Askel or Jada, if you want, eat both or both? either other. Done, okay. Well, we can, we can all go if you want. It might make okay. it easier. But... Yeah, cool. It's all okay. Okay. Oh. Okay, so all characters are now dressed and and you do look, you know, the stuff that you had from Jibai, uh, um Rima was good. It was nice clothes. You look amazing now. You are, rather than just kind of the, the off off the rack suit which look good you look tailored and perfection you all all of your characters um a, as you move and uh, as you walk i mean you're all pretty fit uh and pretty life and, and graceful some of you are very good looking and with the combination of that and definitely your finery you attract a lot of attention people think you look fine very 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 beautiful um one other question from me uh items um that people are taking with them please seven are you taking anything i should be aware of uh no he won't go on cool. uh tenure uh likewise cool. um nicholas but it, 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 oh. is, is anybody going armed is probably the question no no uh eskel and uh, gray would be uh fully unarmed no no armor as okay. well all right. Uh, anybody taking any items of note? Anything I should be aware of? Uh, you've taken the earbuds, obviously, Severin. We've discussed that, but um, anything else? Going once, going twice, gone. Okay. Fantastic. All of you get dressed in your finest. All of you head out uh, unarmed. Um, earbuds are with you. You walk through the streets. You now know the the route quite well. You've you've come to know all of you have come to know Jebai Rima relatively well in your comparatively short time here. And and as I say, you your characters, all six of you, are dressed to the proverbial nines. And you do gain quite a lot of attention as you walk through. But it's positive attention. Firstly, a number of you are foreign types. Um, but but you are you are dressed impeccably. You look amazing. Um. Uh, you actually up. sorry sorry chris sorry to cut, cut I, I think actually on retrospect tanya will take a short sword in in a bag okay just uh and but no in fact she'll wear it uh just to so that there's some we have some form of protection all right 
Okay, yeah. sure. Sure, thank you. Uh, you? A daisy. Uh, so, you find your way to... Uh, find your way back to this building here. It's... Um, it, it's... Huge. Like, the compound is absolutely massive. And you'll see there a, um, a, a set of uh, arches. One in one of those arches, kind of directly, not kind of, but in in between, you can see there are two towers there. That is the main main door, and you'd recalled it from a few days previously that you'd been there in the in the sopping rain. Uh, this time around, however, it's not raining; it's a sunny day, and you are dressed impeccably. And immediately, the reaction you get from the four well-armed and well-armored men. Uh, outside the gate is very, very different. They, you, their, their chests, their chests come out. Their spears are at the ready, and they're clearly interested and and focused on you as you six of you walk up. Uh, what happens from here? You're a few feet away. You're twenty foot away or so from them. Uh, so Severin will uh, act according. I mean, obviously his status is higher than the guards. Nonetheless, he will be charming, but not obsequious. Um, can, you know. can you roll the earbuds, please? Uh, I'm just interested in a one or a two as a failure. 33. Perfect. He's fine. Okay. Uh, give me give me a roll, please. Um, this isn't going to be masked. Uh, give me a roll. As you can see, see the results of your actions. Hang on, sorry. Just type that into my Teams, work Teams. That's not <laughs> <laughs> like a little bit puzzled with that. They will be, but why IRD 100? Yeah. 84. 84, good roll. Plus, uh, what is his charming skill? Uh, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Uh, it is plus 65. Nice. Uh, brilliant. Okay. What's what do you say? So he'll he'll say um, my uh, mistress, and he'll make up a name connected to the family name in Jeboma Beth, uh, pointing out uh, Tanya uh, has travelled from overseas and um, yada yada yada, and uh, um, and wishes to make acquaintance with. The good Chamberlain. Um, obviously, we wouldn't dream of this ordinarily, but we find ourselves here without an introduction. However, we know the Chamberlain will, will greet the introduction very well. Potentially, it's uh, uh, very lucrative, etc., uh, etc. Et he'll dress this up as a kind of a meeting of that will benefit him, and he'll make it clear that anyone who makes arrangements will be smiled upon down the chain uh, and uh, it, perhaps if they could uh, request to speak to the Chamberlain's secretary okay um, well first and first and foremost Severin your words land there's no no question about that uh, and and um, both Tanya uh, sorry both Jada and and Askel you are dazzled with the both charm sophistication and level of authority that is displayed by Severin. He comes across as both authoritative and in, in control and in, in, in power of the situation and control of the situation, but also um, not friendly, but, but warm. And he chooses his words, you think, uh, impeccably. And uh, the 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 guards um, all straighten. They they clearly have seen your very very beautiful clothes, and and they bow at, at your words. And uh, one of them um, has some kind of pips on his shoulder. You're assuming is is perhaps more senior than the others. Uh, bows and says, "My lords, you you, you are welcome." Uh, who may I say uh, to? Uh, Yes, who am I to say to 
Omar Ben Ali, uh, honorary Chamberlain of Jazia Al Hafiz, is calling on her, and he looks in Tanya's direction. And uh, Severin will answer, uh, nodding, um, and he will give the name that Tanya has given him, who is a, a, a family, a known trading family of Jemima Beth, who she knows through her family connections, best she can remember. And she is going to be a, a member of that family. And if she can remember somebody that she mixed with about her age and race, she will choose that name. Okay. Uh, so... So the guard concerns um, clearly is not just some hired thug. He's, he's clearly got some smarts around him. Uh, he takes all that information in. He nods and says, My lord, if you would kindly wait here, uh, I will go and see if uh, Omar bin Ali's uh, secretary may be available. And you wait. And you wait. Uh, after, after about five or ten minutes, um, one of the uh, one of the soldiers on duty comes out and and offers, uh, you know, says to you, "You're welcome to to take uh, shelter away from the sun and the shade if if you wish." Uh, a number of you do take that up. Well, you, you're inclined to take that up at least because it certainly is quite warm. Um, but you wait. Probably about uh, forty five minutes later, the gentleman. Uh, or the guard returns and he says to you uh, he, he he comes up to, to Severin he, he bows again and he says uh, to, to Severin um, I have news my lords so Omar Ben Ali's secretary will not see you Omar bin Ali himself will see you. In fact, Bring it on. if if you if I may suggest, he may see you now. He is curious and interested to meet you. Of course, uh, we we uh, will be most honoured. And uh, Severin says something equally charming. Okay. Your. So, any any actions or any reactions from anybody else, particularly perhaps from the uh, the native speakers? Anything from either Askel or Jada? Anything you're doing, saying? Anything from Nicholas? Um, no, I, I think you know Askel would just be let's see, supporting and nodding and that sort of thing, and looking generally um, welcoming and supportive. Mm -hmm. I, I guess, yeah. Okay. So. You are led in into this this space here. I mean, through through the through the doors, and the the sound of the street and the and the and the busy mer merchant district of. Well, actually, you're in the in the palace district, to be fair, of Jebai um, Ritana fades fades away somewhat, uh, and you you find yourself in in this space. Um, you, you come up a set of stairs, and again you're into this beautiful, beautiful courtyard. Uh, it, it is ornate. It is stunning. Um, you see a number, of, a large number of servants. Plenty of other guards are, are in evidence around, certainly well patrolled. And you are taken uh, in, inside. You can see an open doorway there, and you're taken through various rooms. And you find yourself heading through passageways, which look like this. You can certainly see why this this um, this palace is called the Painted House, and uh, you're you're taken into at the end of this corridor that you can see on screen. You're you're taken down this corridor, and there's a series of uh, seats in a in a kind of an oval um, waiting room, and that is indeed what you do. You are sat down. A a, a servant dressed in just clean white robes comes out. And asks you if you'd like to take tea uh, once you once you all sit down. No one, by the way, Tanya has battered an eyelid um, about you carrying a sword. No one is even appears even vaguely interested. Um, the uh, yeah, the 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 servants um, offers you tea. There's tea there if people choose, and you're in the waiting room, and you do indeed wait. Uh, 
half an hour goes past. Any actions from characters I should be aware of? Severin, your earbuds have now run out for the day. Okay. Uh, so Severin will say to Askel and Jada that his that that is the case. He will. Uh, Severin says, "I will obviously try and use my an alternative language. Uh, it's quite an essential meeting, so I'm going to try and be as charming as I possibly can. However." If the requisite languages are not available, I'll have to, uh, if you wouldn't mind translating, uh, if you wouldn't mind translating uh, as best you can from word for word, I'll, I'll try and dress this up as, 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 as skillfully as I can. No problem. That's all the same. Nod. Okay. Anything from Nicholas? No, nothing from Nicholas. Just don't forget to flatter. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, Jada. Jada would probably explain the etiquette, of, you know, just the customs. To ah, okay. To everyone would know how to approach these meetings. Type of meetings. Good idea. Yeah. Okay. Likewise, tenure of in terms of what she had, has observed as when her growing up. Okay. All right. Um. So another 15 or so minutes passes, and finally um, another two, a, a distant bell is rung somewhere, and seemingly almost out of thin air, not quite, but out of um, a, a, a corridor, just around the corridor, two guardsmen, the one that you first uh, met at, at the gate, and another just appear. As soon as that bell is rung, they just suddenly appear, almost, almost from from nowhere, uh, and they move purposefully past you to towards these massive, double, beautiful doors, again painted and inlaid, um, and open them. And they open into a beautiful, airy, open room. Uh, your second story up, so you're not massively high up, but it's, it has a beautiful view over the, uh, the the city, and it's just it's filled with sunlight and uh, the sound of the market, which you can hear in the distance, and it's just a very very pleasant pleasant space. There are a number of um, uh, so it's, it's a columns room uh, as you come in, and there is a, a very large desk facing towards the door and pretty much other than the desk there is uh, and a chair behind the desk there is no other furniture in the in the room either side of these columns as you walk down and it's it's quite a large room it would be maybe 40 foot by 40 foot um, is just racks and racks and racks of paper, parchment, books, all manner of documentation. And sitting uh, with his head down, reading uh, some documents, no, not paying you the slightest of attention, is this man. He is uh, impeccably dressed. Uh, he is um, uh, clearly um, elven in, in some way, shape, or form, either half elf or full elf. You will see he has uh, pointed ears in that picture. You'll also note one of the things you immediately clock is he has something on his ear, which is very familiar to you. It's a set of earbuds. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, and he uh, is beautifully, beautifully dressed. A very, very handsome man, and beautifully dressed with with rings, etc. Um, the 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 main guard that you've been interacting with nods at at you and motions you forward, and uh, 
he stands you in a semicircle, arranges you in a semicircle, and um, then nods at you, Severin, and then departs. And he and the other um, the other guardsmen head out outside the door. You are left alone in the room. The only sound is the occasional flicking of the page from this man as he reads a book. Any actions from anybody? Um, I think we'll give give him a bit of time, and I think um, uh, they're, they're obviously certainly my two characters are ready to give the appropriate level bow hmm. that Tenya and or Jada has, you know, if, as befits their relative status in society. Hmm. Um, and if if uh, and if if he doesn't speak in the, in in a you know thirty seconds, then um, a Severin uh, uh, will kind of make a very polite sort of um, ahem, uh, what a ahem or sort of <laughs> so so uh, an appropriate statement that 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 suggests we're very pleased to make his acquaintance and thank him for the full. Um, uh, allowing us to to converse with him or something you know the, the appropriate phrase okay all right so it's, 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 it's an indication given by jada and her etiquette talk anything about the situation um jada, like, is there sort of an expectation of who speaks first that yeah sort of yeah thing? sure fair call fair call mm. jada or Askel, do either of you have either diplomacy or local etiquette as as a skill that you may have Uh, actually, I think Eskel does. Hang on a sec. Sorry, Graham, I didn't mean to derail your plan. I think no, no, it's all good. No, it's all good. These are all good points. Yeah. Uh, Tanya has plus 20 diplomacy. Yeah, eskel has got um, plus 33 local, local etiquette. Okay. Okay, could you, could, you give me a, could you give me a roll, please? This will be, this will be masked. My first roll of the day. Yes. Seventy-two. Seventy-two. Cool. Okay. Seventy-two. And sorry, it was thirty-five. Is that right? Uh, thirty-three plus thirty-three. 30. Oh, cool. Thank you. Um. Yeah, look, you you would you would definitely uh, know that hierarchy is really important. I mean, I was going to say in this culture, this is your culture, uh, and you would you would know very well that you wait, Askel. Do not interrupt. You do not try to preempt a discussion. You wait. Okay, um, Askel would just. Um, uh... I guess signal to the um the group. Mm -hmm. uh, if we hadn't already talked about it uh, beforehand, but um... uh, look, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you you d you didn't make that roll beforehand, but you did say um, it would, Jada said that she would have imparted um, knowledge about how to handle the situation beforehand. So you did say that beforehand. So at least Jada did. I'm happy for Askel to have gone with that as 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 well. So yeah, I'm happy to say you would have said that beforehand. Yeah, I think I think it would have just been a simple um, you know gesture of just you know just holding the hand off to the side for, enough for people to see. Just mm -hmm. as a sign of just just wait. Yep. Okay. Um. Sarah, so based on that information or, or Tanya, do you... Do oh, that? I'll wait. I'll, I'll certainly wait, yeah. And I think uh, um, Tanya said that she would also impart anything that she knew before we went in the room as well, if you remember. It was the same time that Jada said. And she has diplomacy. Okay. Um... Okay. So, after, after a time... Um... Just a second. Just a second, folks.
Um, Omar Benelli uh, closes the book in front of him and he looks up and he looks around each of you and just fully takes it in your beautiful clothes your you you, you really have um, spent the money and it was worth it uh, and then says the following in uh, Haridanian um, Askel and Jadar uh, just making sure oh, whoops that was nearly into oh you can see damn it you can see this channel was anybody watching <laughs> Couldn't, no. couldn't see anything. Couldn't see anything. There you go. Sort of appeared, but didn't read it. So yeah. there you go. Thank you, you Pete. You're taken You're... with his his beard ear symmetry. <laughs> that smells. What an amazing beard ear symmetry. Yes, mm. Pete. I love you. Love your honesty. Love your honesty. Um, Askel and Jadar. He says the following in quite beautiful, very beautiful, uh, Haridanian. <laughs> This is what? Well, well Severin, I'll ask, uh, politely inquire. Um, can you uh, tell me what he said, please? Does... Uh, okay, so the man is asking who we are and what we want, but he says... <laughs> I wonder if I should tell you this part. Just that, um, are these some barbarian traders from the north? Yes. <laughs> Um, he, he looks a bit puzzled with the trans why you'd be translating in front of your companions, uh, Jada, and and turns to you and Askel again. Oh, any reaction from Askel with the comments? Uh, so so Jada's translating relate relaying. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, Does Askel say I'll do anything? Um. Uh. Yeah, I, I, I think yeah. Askel needs to uh, answer the uh, straight up. Who are you? Um. Um. So it would be just be Askel. Um. My lord, what if, is um. Um. We are travelers. Um. Um, who have come to your fair city um, and we are looking for support and assistance um, we have uh, that uh, our friends are not barbarians could you give um, me a charm roll please uh, Askel yeah sick Don't roll a fine ball here, please. <laughs> 38. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, does he have presence or charm or anything like that? I uh, just got pre. Uh, he's plus 33 presence. Oh, wow. Mm. That was one of his uh, character yep. creation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, nice. Yeah. Uh, um, Graham, top, top of your head, what's. Um, Charm, please, for stats. Presence and... Uh, charm is... Sorry, wrong character. It is uh, empathy and presence. Cool. What, what's your empathy presence, please, then? Uh, empathy is plus 14, and presence was plus 33, cool. so 47. Cool. Uh, okay, so just a negative two to that roll because you're not trained in it, but that's that's pretty good. Um, okay, so you ans so you, you you describe who you are, um, and, and that your friends aren't barbarians, but you you don't do it in in an offensive way because that roll wasn't offensive, thank goodness. Uh, he he then says. Um, that to you, Jadar, and to you, Askel, coming in two seconds, one second, one second, Askel. Where is Askel's channel? Askel's channel is... I can't see it for looking. There's Askel's channel. 
There's Askel's channel. Can Severin speak at this point? Uh, he can. Yep. And he, he calmly says to Askel, um, quite a key conversation this. Uh, would you mind asking him very politely if he would activate his speech? So, so um, Omar Ben Ali looks up and he stares daggers at Severin. I'm only speaking to. Understood. Under un, under my breath, yeah. So, so like Askel would just uh, pause Severin, um, and then uh, uh, maintain, uh, then face face back to to him, um, and obviously speaking Herodanian. Um, the the uh, they speak uh, uh, a few languages, but I uh, believe the the common one. For these, uh, all is uh, I think it's Westron. Omar Ben Ali very haughtily nods. He closes his eyes for a minute. And suddenly he is speaking Westron to all of your ears, or he's speaking something. It's weird. The words, words are coming out of his mouth, and they sound like Haradanian. You think Askel and Jadar for a second, and then they morph, and the words just mysteriously end up coming into a different language. Like you hear them, you hear them in Haradanian, but you understand them in Westron. It's really, really odd, really odd. Uh, for everybody else, um, Westron is the language being spoken. Does everybody under does everybody speak Westron? Yeah. Yep. 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 Okay. And um, uh, Severin make a charm roll. He, Omar Ben Ali, looks up and uh, says, "So yes, he can, based on based on the response now." He says again, he repeats the question that he asked um, uh, to Askel and Jadar. Who are you? What do you want? And you're some kind of barbarian trader from the north, please. Now, just to check, is this a this is a ch specifically a charm roll, Severin, or are you doing anything else with this roll? Well, he'll certainly use that skill. Uh, I think he's, look, he's, he's, uh, he's seeking to gain the guy's interest, confidence that he has something interesting to say and that he is being extremely polite in doing so. Okay. Anything else than polite? Uh, well, persuasive, I guess. But, but, but without being pushy, if that makes sense. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, so he, he's um, being appropriate to the, to the, to the situation. Um, he is impressing upon his status, mm -hmm. and that he is being persuasive, but in, in, but very respectful of the man's office. Uh, he will also give some explanation of where they are from, and answer the man's question. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. It, just any other thoughts from anybody else? Just quickly. Don't forget the flattery. <laughs> well, the flattery. Yeah, that's what I mean. Just respectful. Oh, okay. Yes, okay. I, so you are. Attempting to, to flatter. Uh, it befitting the situation, yes. Okay. So, so just yeah. this is a couple of examples. What what would you say in terms of flattery? Oh well, uh, thank you for uh, thank you for taking the time out to uh, to, to meet with us uh, and uh, consider our application, uh, our, our request to speak to. Uh, a complete request to to hear what we have to tell you, something along those lines, a little more eloquently than I just expressed it there. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, give me. Give me. Give me a roll, please. Fifty-six. Fifty-six. Plus, what's his bonus on, um, on charm, please? Um, sorry, I keep flicking character sheets. Not very helpful. Uh, charm is sixty-five. 
Okay. You are beautifully dressed, so you, you get a bonus for that. Um, okay. Uh, can you just describe a little bit more about what, what you say to kind of open them up or butter them up or, or, or you know, kind of like your opening gambit, basically? Well, essentially, as I thanks for taking the time to see his audience in this wonderful, I'll praise, praise his home. Mm -hmm. the city mm -hmm. the culture mm -hmm. uh the um ambience the room temperature I, you know everything he can think of quite frankly to sort of to say we're so uh glad you've taken the time to see us it's a great honor to be in the famed painted house of whatever it is and this fine city we have traveled far um and uh it is is it is exceptionally good of you to to see us at such short notice without formal invitation and we're aware of the uh under different circumstances we would have you know sent ahead and made the rel uh, appropriate uh advances in well in advance we have traveled far and we have we think some important um information of, of note and um uh yes along those lines excellent well your your words seem to have worked he he doesn't smile but his eyes soften a little and he sits back in his his chair a little bit more he asks a couple of kind of um questions he directs them towards uh tanya about who sh who she is so so madam you are from the north uh one of our far-flung sister cities one of the free cities of the north uh jebai marbeth is that correct yeah, Tanya will give a full description of where she's from, uh, her name, using the the family that she is acquainted with quite well back in Chebia Mabeth, mm -hmm. and name check a few of the more prominent merchants in that family, yep. and 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 say something briefly about their healthy trading relationship and respect for this part of the world yep. and their good, productive and honest dealings. And actually, this is somewhere where, where Tanya's background would come into it. She, growing up, would have moved in these kind of circles, for sure. Correct, correct, yeah. 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 Okay, um, so he, he, your words and Severin's um, good, not amazing, but definitely good, um, uh, charm um, seems to have worked. And the initial comments about... Um, you know, the atmosphere, the room, the wonderful city, his his clothes, his pointy beard, whatever it is that you're commenting on. Uh, you know, he... Th th those comments seems to have hit home. And then he, he turns to you and he says to you, Severin, um... No, no, he'd actually ask... He'd ask... No, he would ask. He would ask the group. So... What exactly do you want from me and at this moment i'd like you to make another charm roll please seven uh just before just before make the roll please um seven but just to check um i i don't want to shut off the spotlight from anybody else is there anybody else doing or saying anything is jada filing her nails is askel picking his nose is nicholas i don't know doing what um yeah please please tell me if your characters are doing saying thinking other stuff yeah, I think Asker would just be, um, you know, I guess his body language would be quite supportive huh? of when Seven talking about nodding, agreeing, smiling, you know, just a, sort of like those sort of gestures. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Smiling. Yeah. No. Nah. Yeah, no, yeah, just support, being supportive from Nicholas, just trying to read the vibe and just go along with whatever's being said yep. okay sure thing sure thing cool Severin what was that roll please uh, it is 20 20 okay uh, okay all right just a second Okay, 20 plus, 20 plus, um, what was the result again, please? Uh, but sorry, your charm again, 65? 65. 65, cool. Uh, okay. 
so what 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 do you say when he asks so what do you he, want from me he's gonna say um again wrapping it up in all the respectful language that um their request is an unusual one and that they have um a mutual and beloved um associate uh, a very important associate in mm -hmm. common with and i will then name the uh our, our ultimate his his boss the gem chairwoman of the solar council and i guess it, he would frame that name in very respectful terms and if there's a there's a sort of god bless her whatever it is at the end the respectful language around it to yep. say that he, he we have we have inter we have we have been given an, a, a, an urgent and very serious message uh to pass on to the the person at the solar council uh we appreciate it's extremely unusual however it is of the utmost importance and we have taken oaths to impart that this information nay warning to her in person now i pre and appreciating this is irregular um but it, it carries with it a high degree of seriousness um and I'm, i'd be happy to name that that contact um for you uh and we we believe your 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 uh mistress of the solar council like a full title uh would be interested to hear what um are very important and um uh, contact has has to say uh, we th we know that uh, she will find this information extremely valuable and we will want to learn of it as soon as possible uh, we pre appreciate this is an unusual approach uh, but these are these are desperate times and um, we swore an oath that we would deliver this message in person so he sits forward he is he is clearly curious and he says go on so he's you know keep talking um omar, uh, so omar is is becoming more friendly make another roll modify it by plus 20 this time make it good 80. 80 plus 65 plus 20 plus nice what do you say so um basically he'll go on and he will name Nengwan, uh give her full name and say this person is a an old dear friend uh not only of um ourselves and particularly a mistress giving tenures um full title and family background uh, but also we are aware a dear an old uh, friend and colleague of the chairwoman of the solar council i wish i could remember names chris uh, but i just cannot that's all right, that's all right. Um, try being a GM, uh, try being a uh, gm sorry. and not being able to remember names <laughs> no but at least you made them up <laughs> exactly <laughs> um uh, anyway al hafiz is her name uh anyway my characters have a better memory than me few um <laughs> and so yeah and he will say this yes um we and if, if we sound a little dramatic and um it's because we've we've we understand this you know some urgency to the message and uh apologize if we we can't be more more open with it but we as i say we have we've we've given a vow uh, that we would we would address her in person to give her this message and um I, I, we're here to impress upon you um, this urgency and respectfully uh, request an audience uh, that we may deliver this message and, and, and so retreat. Okay. So, on the role master tables, um, you rolled previously 105, which is near success, which is uh, 91 to 110, You've got near success. Success is one one eight one 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 to one seven five. With that eighty, that very critical eighty that Severin just rolled, you rolled an absolute success. So, <laughs> and and not not here that the GM was was uh, 
sweating at all, but you know, um, I know we typically only. <laughs> we often only do this for fights, but this is a game based on chance, and that could have gone quite differently. So, yeah. so I don't know. I, I don't know, Graham, if uh, <sighs> Mike yeah, might come sure. into it, but um, so he is riveted at, at what you what you have said, uh, and he. He takes a pen and no he doesn't actually he 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 takes in the name and he looks you up and down again like takes all of you in takes takes in your clothes takes in your finery you're clearly people of substance to a superficial person because you're beautifully dressed And he gets to his feet and just simply says, wait here. Ooh, bloody hell. And he leaves. Um, and walks out the door. And as the doors open, you see the, the, uh, the guards tense. They actually got their spears ready because suddenly the doors have opened without something, without a reaction. And they look sh like amazed to see Omar walk out. This is clearly not the way that audiences work. And Omar leaves. And you are stood standing. Uh, the door is still open. The two guards are outside. You can see them. Every now and then one of them kind of looks around just to make sure that you know, you're still there. And you hear the two guards kind of quietly muttering to each other. This is out of order. This is not the way it happens. Uh, and Omar leaves. Any any actions from anybody else? I suppose Severin just wants to sort of, in a low voice, very low voice, turn to the party and explain that um, does, uh, now is the time probably to put our cards on the table, um, but we have to be careful who we speak to. But I think it, with Ningwen's name we can trust the chairman of the Solar Council, or oh, I think we have to in our position. Uh, does anyone disagree? No, I, I was thinking it earlier, like when just introducing is like how much we um, can actually want or comfortable to impart or without being well, too well, I think, open. I don't, well, one thing is I don't think we want to lie because there may be people there to detect us we can lie. So uh, what I think is we will say that we have indeed met with Ningman, because we have, and that there is a, a crisis abroad and obviously we won't name that the organization he's not going to name the organization the Lonman, but he is intends to allude that, that the chairman would have some interest in this gathering and that we on Ningwen's uh urgings have been sent a to make contact uh, with 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 the chairman of the solar council, but also to act upon it and uh, putting ourselves in service to to deal with 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 the problem, uh, and also impressed that Ningwen's life she considered to be in in grave danger and was did not expect to to live out the month, uh, and that uh, but, you know and basically put ourselves uh, uh, portray ourselves as, as as in her service, seeing out a task. Uh, and she urged that we would contact you because um, you may be able to assist in, in this endeavor in whatever small way you deem appropriate or possible. You know, something along those lines? Has yeah. anyone got an advance on that? Or Would you give details about uh, Torvash Papalis going to Tarek Nev? Is that the crisis we're talking about? Yes, but I think probably see how the conversation... I don't want to kind yeah. of put my foot in it by dropping names because this person yeah. obviously will be undercover as much as we are it's a secret society so we'll let the un conversation unfold yeah and obviously yep. wouldn't want to say anything in the presence of anybody else including guards yeah. uh you know and, and if this if if that lands then i suspect she will want to speak in confidence herself so yeah sounds good to me right. what about the rest of you does that sound all right yep yep 
Um, yep. No, all good. Is Jada still there? Are you still with us, Star? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep, that's what sounds all good to me. Okay. So, you waited nearly three quarters of an hour. Well, Omar, to, to grace you with his presence. Five minutes, and five minutes only, go past before Omar comes back. He's moving quite quickly, quicker than he was when he left. And he just says in Westron, you will follow me. Fair enough. Right you are, follow away. You duly do so, and you head out um, through this beautiful uh, building down this corridor. And you're escorted first out into this um, initial inner courtyard. And... Just a second. The... As you walk further into the complex, um, there is the sound of running water and beautiful fountains. And you're taken further inside this complex. So you go through that um, that courtyard you can see on screen uh, through into another one. And the, the sounds of the, the streets outside, they don't um, totally go away, but they certainly diminish. And they fade into the background. They're just kind of a, a slight hum in the background. And instead, um, the prominence is the uh, the sound of the leaves in the trees, of, of the numerous um, trees in the garden that you're escorted into in the next in the next courtyard. So you go through another set of double doors and you're taken into almost like the, the inner sanctum. And uh, there is definitely a higher increase of, uh, of, of soldiers around. Um, they, they're up on, up on the walls, uh, well and truly out of earshot of the person that you're about to meet. Uh, but the, there's a number of, of soldiers in, uh, in and around this area. And in the courtyard is a, is a canopy, quite a beautiful, uh, tent. Um, so a, a, as you walk into this courtyard, um, there's almost like a, uh, if you see on screen, with the GM gesturing, there's almost like a cross in the center of two walkways and they go through across a pond so one one walkway going like that and the other way walkway going like that and then the center there's a round um almost like a like, like a dais probably about a 20 or 30 foot dais um in this beautiful beautiful garden and you can hear the sounds of the fountain trickling etc and the the birds tweeting etc and there is a canopy on this um uh, uh, in the center of this this walkway Beautiful white linen fluttering gracefully in the breeze. And inside the canopy, reclining on a divan, basically, a, a, a couch of some kind, is a single woman. Um, the image I'm going to put up will have... Well, no, sorry, is, is actually th th three women. Um, and this is what the person looks like person in the center and she has the two women dressed as you can see either side of her uh, as she sees the six characters approaching her the two women either side of her leave and walk off and stand in the shade well and truly out of earshot and uh, Omar Chamberlain brings the six characters forward and the six of you find yourselves um, standing inside the, the canopy area, so you're out of the sun thank goodness uh, but not given anything to, to sit on as this woman reclines in front of you Omar says a word in Haradanian um, uh Askel and Jedi, you know the word, it's just simply mistress. He bows. 
and backs. Backs away from the, the, the central dais that you now find yourselves in. In the middle of the garden, it's beautiful environments. All six of you find yourselves alone. Chair of the Solar Council, Jasia Al Hafiz herself. She is a middle aged woman, you would say in her late forties. She has a stern expression on her face. Her features are sharp and angular, with high cheekbones and a prominent nose that gives her a hawk like appearance. Her eyes are a striking shade of green, which almost seem to glean with intelligence and uh, intensity. Her skin is a warm olive tone with a slight reddish hue. And her hair, you can see a lot of it, is jet black, long and thick. She's lying down, but she gives the sense of being an extremely tall and imposing figure. You can make out that she has both broad shoulders and you suspect a very straight posture if she stood to attention. With that, the GM's going to head to the loop. I'll be back in a second. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jolly good. Yeah. I think, uh, uh, just, just, just a thought yeah. here, I think, just to start this off, I think Severin may say that he has of late gone under the name of, because I think mm. truth is important here. I just don't want to be seen to be lying about anything, even if I don't give yeah. it any, any away. Yeah. So the thing is, they will probably, she will most likely have a spy network and have perhaps will know of us already, right? We've already been watching since since we appeared. Potentially. Mm. So what I want to be clear is that we're, I will allude to the fact that we're not travelling on our own names, that we are not aligned to any state organisation of any sort, that we have, we are traditionally adventurers, and we've been called to our higher cause under the mm. guidance of Ningman, and... Uh, we're seeing this through for the benefit mm. of seeing the maintenance and flourishing of the old order, which we have begun to realize is under in acute danger. Um, we realize this, old? you know, and I, and I, and I guess he, he could say, sorry? I was thinking they've got their manifesto, what's it called again? Divine right of the rich. <laughs> yes. So I want to be clear that we're for, for the status quo. <laughs> Um, but uh, that we have been drawn into a higher calling, uh, and, you know, along those lines. Help protect the divine right of the rich? I don't know if you want to... I don't think I'll be that... You won't protect that over yeah, it? Yeah, because I'm not very... Really <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so she... Um, oh, sorry. I was going to say, I've, I've got to go in about 15. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I've got to go in 15. Okay. We, we will wrap up at two o'clock. Done, done, done. All right. Uh, so noting that we'll, we'll finish off in, in 15, 15 minutes, guys. So, um, she... looks around all of you and doesn't say anything for maybe a very, very long... 30, 30 seconds and then clearly addressing Jadar just says simple question and she's speaking in, in Westron heavily accented Westron but definitely Westron um, what is your name? and Jadar I'd like you to make a role here uh yeah, just just give me a roll please. I'm really interested in no zero is one, two, three, four, five. And what do you say, by the way, Jada? Oh I got a uh, forty six. Okay, that's okay. What what did they ask me? Just who it... What's your name? Ah. So I'll just explain Jada and a little bit about my background. Um, 
she as soon as you say her name uh, your name she loses interest she just wanted your name and she mm. turns uh to nicholas and asks the same question on westrom give me your yeah, nicholas yep 99 <laughs> here you go okay what do you say yep uh he would yeah he would simply give his name his, his real name yep uh Askel, the same question. And the role, please. Yep. Oops. 100. Hey! Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, okay, and you giving his, his real name? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, full name, so Eskelian. Cool. Excellent. Uh, and Gray? Gray. 84. Fantastic. And his name. Yep, just simple. Just following suit. Everyone's just giving their names out. Okay. Uh, and then lastly, Severin and Tanya. Again, a roll for you each, please. Just a simple, simple roll. 52. And 30. Lovely. Uh, they'll give real names. Uh, Severin Malad. The emissary of Ningwen, I can't remember her surname, but uh, uh, her, her highness, blah, 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 however, you know, however it is just described. So at Ningwen's voice, she so she was looking for just names, but suddenly at Ningwen's voice, her head snaps back at Severin. She stares at Severin. Uh, Severin will nod respectfully. She looks you all up and down. Very cool, very calm. Regal. She says in this strange, heavily accented Westron. A group matching your description, or at least some of your descriptions, three months ago was accused of slaying a key spy master in a city called Jebai Rima. Can you tell me what happened and who was involved? Yes. Uh, so, Severin will attempt to be charming. Whether it'll do him any good or not, I don't know. I do, I do want to roll, please. Yes. Yeah. 80. 80. You like your 80s tonight? Plus 80. 65. Plus. Nice. Nice. Thank you. Good. <laughs> Go for it. What do you say? So, look, he's, he, he's going to tell the truth. Uh, and he will make it clear that he is telling the truth very deliberately. And he realizes that the danger potential danger this puts him in but we will not do you the service of of, of, of trying to uh, of anything else at this at this dire moment yes that is true we have inadvertently been targeted by spy agencies of a kingdom far away perhaps you, perhaps you to the south perhaps you know of what we speak um we are not from of aligned to any nation we are not allied to any organization this is something we've become tangled up in. Uh, and we were targeted by the organization. And we fought back with contacts that were for ours from Jabai Rima, from trading families, as it's discussed. Um, and the, um, the spy who was attempting to end our life, we took hers. Uh, in doing so, we have discovered... Who was that? And we'll name Twilia's name. Torvash Twilia. Uh, in doing so, we have learned how did something. She, how did she die? She died by my sword. Um, and the exploits of this party. Where uh, did she die? Nearly... Describe her death. <clears throat> He'll give a full description of the event. Okay. And accuracy, including the creatures that came out of her belt. Okay. Uh... We took no pride in that, uh, but 
that is the events that happened. We are aware of, have become aware of the wider battle that is ensuing and find ourselves caught in the middle of it. Um, we've, um, we were sent by contacts of our good friend Tenya to, to Ningwen, who took us in, explained something of how desperate the cause is and suggested that before, urged us. Before you continue, what happened at a border town called Nath five months ago? He'll recount the story in full, honestly. Okay. Uh, so, he'll, I mean, you know the story. Uh, he, he will recount the story of why we went there. We were simple travellers and mercenaries. Uh, um, and we, we went there to earn our fortune. We became aware of uh, a wider menace in the area. And we uh, of a terrible, terrible uh, affliction, a, a plague that was about to be, to be sent and possibly destroy cities whole towns we were sent by the guard and we dispatched the evil um wizard behind the who we subsequently discovered was also an agent we rescued another agent who who gave us some more information and we were subsequently raised into some local celebrity against our will for saving the town which didn't do ourselves any favors in terms of spotlighting ourselves to agents from various nations and who became very interested in this and therefore we've been subsequently on the run uh, as I say to you we're not aligned to any any nation of any sort we're simply trying to do the right thing and protect the world as we know it the old order that is that is why we're here that is why we went to Ningwen we see it as our task that has been laid before us and Ningwen has explained something of that and has suggested that you you if you, so you that you may be willing to hear our tale and point us in an appropriate direction or, 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 or you know, may be of me we may be of service to you and, and you may um, we could be so bold offer us advice what specifically is your purpose what is specifically quest Ningwen has urged that we visit the dead city of Tarak Nev. Um, there is an an agent there who we believe is preparing a weapon that will dis bring, seeks to bring down our old order. She has urged us to go there and what, intercept what that agent. agent. Uh, Torvash Papillus. Um, and this weapon. Look, he'll give the he'll give the you know the usual the blurb. Um, in terms of what we're about and what we're doing. Uh, he won't give, you know, not going to embellish it too much detail, but basically what we have heard about um, that they are going to, um, what they intend to do down in Tarak Nev. So the Torvish Papillus is preparing a, a weapon, um, and that could mean the end of everything that we hold dear. Uh, um, they call it the Hammer. Um, we, by our admission, we, we know a little, we are but six adventurers, but, uh, we have pledged our service to do something about this, um, for the benefit of everything we know and love. Describe this person, Ningwen, of which you speak. Who is she? Where so, is she from? And when did you last see her? So Severin will give a full description of uh, what he knows, and um, Tenya will add information, and he'll explain that Tenya is a family friend of Tenya's. They knew each other when they were small, and Tenya will help to provide that detail when prompted, keeping it pretty pretty much down the line. Um, and we'll explain their background, how they came, uh, explain uh, her father, and how he perished, and 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 the 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 story that took them to see Ningwen, that explain what how she appeared when they first met her, and then how she that was a disguise, and they'll give a full description of what she looks like, complete with a, uh, a complete description of the place, the Isle of Nan, and um, her followers there, and how she appeared, and what she said, and how she obviously held herself in in high esteem. 
and, and recommended that that we we seek you out. She and, and will say something of the peril that she felt she was under, um, and how she, she considers she did not have long to go, okay. and that it was up to us to 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 pick up this mission and see it through. Can I ask um, a roll from both Severin and a roll from Tanya, please, modified by your channeling? Twenty-seven. Oh, sorry, failure. And not a failure. Uh, dice roll failure. Seventy-three. So that's twenty-seven, seventy-three. Um, channeling plus 15 from uh, Severin Tanya minus one okay. so she at this moment she seems to almost completely ignore you all for a second uh, for some time and she looks deeply into a ring that she has on her finger. It's, first, it's a, 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 um, a large, opaque, or well not opaque, white, white ring with um, slight streaks through it. And the longer she stares at it, some of you swear, I'm not going to ask for perception rolls, but some of you swear it changes color slightly turns maybe a little bit pink after a time about five minutes not no not quite that a couple of minutes she puts her hand back down on her lap and she looks up and she says and and by the way you have gone and when you you've you Lost over with a sentence or two saying, you know, we give the usual spiel. But you you give a full detail of what happens. And she is very interested in asking um, o over full grilling of what happens, of what happened to both um, Twilia, the, the spy mistress that you slew, and also what happened in Nath. And she asked a lot of really, really, really small questions what did the tower look like um that the the deranged um wizard was was based in what color were the lizards that he was using what did twilia's apartment look like um all manner of questions that were um and specifically what happened in both of those fights how did the people die what and the discussion goes on for quite some time. So that that happened some time before she actually looks into her ring and before that dice roll was made by each Tanya and, and, and Severin and the other, yeah, and those two dice rolls. And she finally looks up and says, I don't know you. I've never met you, but I have heard stories of you. I've read dispatches. And I have had a description of you from my dear friends, Ningwen. I also believe, however strange the story is, and it is a strange story, she looks down at her ring again, that you are telling the truth. Ningwen indicated that it was possible that I may hear from people matching your descriptions. I wish to speak with you more. And we will speak more. But I have some information for you. We have a good spy network. Sea of Cantana and many eyes. Eight weeks ago, on the 17th of Toil, a man by the name of Torvash Papilius and what remained of an expedition was seen in the free city of Landania. By all accounts, they had returned some venture into the Ally Meg, the Green Fester. 
and look to be in very, very poor shape. Some of the people that returned died soon after arriving. He was seen, and there was no ability to actually ask questions of him, of course. But one of our most trustworthy and skilled spies was able to give, was able to pick up a hint of a fractured conversation he had with one of the local Tikos sector chiefs. And with that, it's two o'clock, and that's the end of the session this time around. Ah, oh, man! <laughs> I was ready to write it down! <laughs> Dictionary corner, he's got his pen out. He's all ready to go. Oh, man. Oh, I was so worried that there'd be, like, shapeshifters and we're telling all our secrets to the wrong person. <laughs> well, well, that out. That's a really good idea. <laughs> Thanks, Dara. No, no, <laughs> that was so scary. So we're off to Landania, are we? Well, we'll see. Not <laughs> Landania. Oh, well, we'll see. I don't know what she's going to say. Yeah, we'll to... Just as well we didn't lie, though, right? That was a good. Yeah, that was yeah, a, that good was a call. very good move. Oh, scary. <laughs> I mean, sooner or later, I had to lay the cards on the table for someone, and let's yeah. face it, this person has a vested interest in the old order not tumbling over. <laughs> if no one... It's when they started asking all those very specific questions. And like, oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good job. Thank you, Chris. Cool. Well hope you, hope you guys enjoyed it. Not, not maybe my no, finest, but uh, there we go. That was great. Yeah, it was great. Thank you. Nice yep. progress. Nice one. Yep. And mm. uh, hang on, just a second.